Hello everybody. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Homeopathic Super Sessions by Dr. Jagos. Today, I'll be doing an important topic that is the logic of homeopathy. However, it is a difficult topic to understand, but I have simplified it for you in the most simplest manner so that you will be able to comprehend or understand it correctly. So please see the full video right till the end in order to understand it properly. Well, to begin with, we have to refer certain books or sections. That is the sixth edition of Organon, the introduction. Translator's preface by William Borick. Introduction to sixth edition by James Cross and Stuart Close chapter, which you all know, Logic of Homeopathy, chapter number 16. So I have simplified it for you in very simple terms. You will be able to understand it very well. So before we go, or dive into the important aspects, aspects of logic, there are certain terms which are used in and out in order to understand logic. So you have to understand the definition or the meanings of these terms. Then only you'll be able to understand the logic of homeopathy properly. Because whenever we teach logic, all these important terms are used in and out of logic. So you have to know these terms properly. Like what is a premise, what is inference, what do you mean by to induce, what is induction, what is deduction, what is generalization, what is causation, what is concomitant, what is individualization, experimentation, analysis, synthesis, and observation. So let us understand these terms in simple language. So premise, what is a premise? It is something which proceeds from, and from that we can infer or conclude. That means what? we have some knowledge beforehand of something. And from that knowledge, we can infer or we can give or we can come to an conclusion. So a premise is something which you know beforehand. And from that premise, we have to draw a conclusion. Inference it means to infer or to deduce or derive as a consequence of, to conclude, to prove or to imply. In short, it is the art of drawing a conclusion from a premise. So a premise is something which you know be beforehand and we have to then, from that premise, we have to infer or we have to draw a conclusion from the premise. Kindly remember, if the premise is correct, your inference or conclusion will be correct. If a premise is wrong, then your inference or conclusion also will be wrong. Deduction. It means to derive from, to lead forth, to convey, to draw a conclusion from something known or assumed, to derive by reasoning or to infer. And this process of deduction this process is known as the process of deducing. So when you do deduction, the process is known as deducing. So that means what? It means to draw a conclusion from something known or assumed. Example, doctor is entering a building. So you have you are going to draw a conclusion from something known or assumed. So you know that somebody comes in the car, enters the building. He is in a white coat. He has a stethoscope around the neck. So you have you are you have to draw a conclusion. So what conclusion will you draw? That he's a doctor. And why is he coming into the building? Because you, someone is not well or someone wants medical attention. So therefore, the deduction is that doctors enter into the building. Therefore, the deduction or inference is some, someone in the building is not well. So what you have drawn a conclusion from something known. So what was known to you? A man in a white coat, wearing a stethoscope around the neck. So that is a doctor. So you have drawn a conclusion, doctors come into the building, and the conclusion is that someone is not well in the building. Induce means to cause or to produce in any way. Example, to produce heat or electricity. For example, you take two flint stones and rub it together. Heat will be produced or sparks will be produced as a result of which the you can light up certain certain things so a heat is produced or electricity is produced so induce means what to produce in any way or to cause so what are we causing when you rub two stones together two flint stones together we are producing heat or we are producing sparks to come out from these two flint stones now typhoid is induced by typhoid bacillus salmonella typhi so if a person is suffering from typhoid what is the cause of typhoid the salmonella typhi Induction, it means to lead to a conclusion or an inference from. 
or it is a process of deducing a number of separate facts, particulars, or instances for the purpose of proving a general statement or a law for deriving it. So induction is nothing but you have to come to a conclusion from, or it means that you are having separate, it's a process of deducing a number of separate facts. So the facts may be one or they may be more than one in the form of particulars or instances for the purpose of proving a general statement or a law for deriving it. Thus induction and deduction are always opposite ways of arising of arriving at the same conclusion. That is induction is the opposite of deduction. So whatever you do, induction or deduction, both of them will, will lead to the same conclusion. Generalization, it is a process of deriving or inferring a general statement on the basis of a common denominator from a series of particulars. That means what? It is a process of deriving or inferring a general statement. So you derive a general statement on the basis of a common denominator from a series of particulars. That means what? You have a series of particulars. For example, patient comes to you with certain particular symptoms like throbbing pain in the head, throbbing pain in the abdomen, and throbbing pain in the limbs. So these are the series of particulars. So you have to derive a general statement on the basis of a common denominator from a series of particulars. So throbbing pain in the head, throbbing pain in the abdomen, throbbing pain in the limbs, they are series of particulars. Now what is common in all of them? Throbbing pain. So the general statement will be what? Throbbing pain is common throughout the particulars. So therefore, it is a process of deriving or inferring a general statement on the basis of, of a common denominator from a series of particulars. Causation is a process of causing something to happen or exist. Concomitant, as you all know, it is one which has no relation to the chief complaint except the time of occurrence. And in individualization, this art of identifying correctly an object or a person from a class or group of similar objects or person. So, for example, in a class of 100 people, 99 people are wearing a white colored apron, but one, one fellow is wearing a black coat. So, you can easily identify an object correctly. That means what? You identified that this person who is wearing a black coat, he stands out from the remaining 99 persons who are wearing the white coat. Experimentation it is a process of testing new ideas to find out what effect it has. Analysis, it is a classification of symptoms into the various groups. As you all know, when you take a case, we analyze it. That means what? Into the various groups are the mentals, physical, generals, physical, particulars. So as and when the patient tells the symptoms, we are analyzing it. Synthesis is what? The symptoms are which analyzed are now put into three broad headings of mentals, physical genders, and physical particulars. So we have analyzed it. Analyzing in, when we analyze symptoms, it may be in any order. It could be a mental, it could be a physical gender, again a mental, a particular, and so on. But in synthesis, what are we doing? We are collecting all the mentals, putting into one group, collecting all the physical genders, putting into one group, and collecting all the physical particulars and putting into one group. Okay. Now observation, it is the art of noticing or perceiving. Thus, observation, interpretation, and inference are essential ingredients of the logical thinking. Now we come to the definition. It is derived from the Greek word logos, meaning speech. And it, logic is defined as the science and art of reasoning correctly from a premise to a conclusion. This is very important, correctly. It is a science and art of reasoning correctly from a premise to a Conclusion. So premise is there something which you know beforehand from that you are concluding. As I told you, if the premise is wrong, the conclusion will be wrong. If the premise is correct, the conclusion also will be correct. The fact which we observed are turned into concepts by induction. So whatever facts we are observing, we are forming into a concept. Thus, the facts are the expression of the patient which we see. So whatever facts are there, it is nothing but the symptomatology or the expressions of the patient, which we see that's a particular symptom. Then it is made into a general statement or a concept, which then stopped in the brain. Then from the particulars, we have to find out a general statement. I just give an example of throbbing pain in the head, throbbing pain in the abdomen, throbbing pain in the limbs. So a general statement, throbbing pain runs throughout. So that's all for this video. So you have to know the terminologies well. Then only you'll be able to understand exactly what is logic because these terms will be used again and again. Important ones are 
premise, induction, deduction, infer to deduce. Okay, this will be go on. These terms will be will be there off and on when you study the logic. So my next video will be the different types of logic. That is the what is inductive logic and what is deductive logic. I'll again teach it teach it to you in a very simple form so that you can understand it. Once you can understand it, your application will be perfect. Hope you like this video. If you like it, please do give it a thumbs up and thank you for listening.